What's wild is, is that if people watch a short video about all the ways in which stress can really diminish your health, well then indeed stress diminishes their health. The mindset and belief effects are absolutely extraordinary and, and very real, right? Replenishing glucose in between hard tasks could restore willpower. So you're, so, saying, so you're saying that learning about ego depletion and believing that willpower is a limited resource is an information hazard that is self-fulfilling. Uh, potentially. Now, <laughs> now, now, now. What do you think most people misunderstand about stress? Yeah, the findings that I think are overlooked tremendously are the following experiment. Um, there's an experiment in animals where a rat is given the opportunity to run on a treadmill. And rats and, and rodents of all kind love, kinds love running on treadmills. You know, there are these interesting, um, this, we'll see who catches this fly first. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm ready, man. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I think, um, you know, there's even a study from Hoppy Hofstra's lab at, at Harvard that showed that if you put a wheels, running wheels in fields, that rodents will run there in the middle of the night and run on them. That's how insanely uh, obsessed with running. They're just um, energetic, they wanna go. There's something rewarding about it for them. But in any event, it lowers their blood pressure. It leads to improvements in a number of metrics that you expect. And you see the same thing in humans, right? Who run on a treadmill or run outdoors or swim in cardiovascular exercise. Okay, well, um, Sapolsky, um, and I love to talk about a an experiment where they took two different cages with animals. One is running voluntarily, but then, that running wheel is tethered to a running wheel in another cage that encloses an animal, forces it to run every time the other one runs. So forced exercise versus voluntary exercise. And the takeaway is very straightforward. Voluntary exercise leads to all sorts of improvements in health metrics, resting heart rate, blood pressure, blood glucose, um, resting blood glucose, et cetera, waking blood glucose. Um, the animal that's forced to exercise, you see the opposite. Right, so it's not exercise per se. It's something about being forced to exercise is uh, causes um, decrements in a number of health metrics, and you see the same thing in humans. So, what's wild is my colleague, Dr. Ali Crum, Department of Psychology at. Stanford um, has done these beautiful experiments on mindset and belief. These are not placebo effects. And what she's shown in, in a just absolutely spectacular way is that if people watch a short video about all the ways in which stress can really diminish your health, well, then indeed stress diminishes their health. Whereas if a separate group watches an, a factual, also five minute, also factual tutorial on all the ways that stress can enhance performance by harnessing your ability to focus, memory formation, et cetera, mm -hmm, all of which mm -hmm. is true. That's indeed what you see. Can I give you my favorite one that I learned about over the last year? Yes. So the Boston Marathon bombing, uh, 2012, about 10 years ago, 2016 maybe. Anyway, uh, Boston Marathon bombing, a study was done comparing people who had been at the actual marathon while the bomb had gone off and people who had watched 90 minutes or more of news coverage about it. And the people who watched 90 minutes or more of news coverage about it showed a greater stress response than the people who'd literally lived through it. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the mindset and belief effects are, are absolutely extraordinary and, and very real, right? I mean, I think, you know, um, recently I've been, reading and researching a lot about and did a podcast on tenacity and willpower. Mm. And um, there was this idea early on from Baumeister and colleagues that willpower is a limited resource. E Some of that- Ego depletion? Willpower. Ego depletion. Yes. Um, it was controversial. Um, they showed that, you know, replenishing glucose in between hard tasks could restore willpower. They showed that, uh uh, was it juries or judges that were low in blood glucose were more likely to give harsher sentences, stuff like this? Yeah, it, it it sort of wicked out to a number of naturalistic situations and it made good sense. And then my colleague, Carol Dweck, also in the psychology department at Stanford, um, most famously known for her work on mind, growth mindset, did an experiment in which they um, essentially asked whether or not tenacity and willpower are limited in terms of being a, some sort of resource and also whether or not it was somehow linked to glucose availability fuel uh, in the brain and body and found that if people thought or were told that mind that uh, excuse me willpower was a limited resource that's indeed what they observed experimentally but that if they were taught or were told that willpower is unlimited and and divorced from glucose levels well then that's exactly what you so saw. you're saying so, you're saying that learning about ego depletion 
and believing that willpower is a limited resource is an information hazard that is self-fulfilling. Uh, potentially. Now, <laughs> now, now, now ba Baumeister, you know, showed um, himself to be, you know, pretty determined um, when and countered the the uh, the Dweck counter by showing that if indeed if there's a hard task followed by a hard task, then your beliefs about willpower. Um, can impact your performance on the second task. So mm. Dweck, the AKA Dweck is right. But that if you have a hard task, hard task, and then another hard task, so back to back to back tasks or more, which is a lot of what life is like, well, then it seems that the that the willpower is a limited resource and glucose supporting will, willpower theory holds up a bit better. <laughs> <laughs>